Yeah, guys, I had an earlier video that didn't really show you the steps, I just talked about it. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys how to put your iPod Touch in a DFU mode and download or restore it to any firmware. For this video, I'm going to be using the 3.0 firmware. Um, and the reason why I'm re I'm changing the firmware on it is because I've been having issues with certain apps that I've deleted. And they're still coming back. And I've been having issues with when I re turn on my iPod, I can't load any apps unless I lock it first. Yeah, it's been annoying me. But anyway, so the first step is to put your iPod Touch into DFU mode. Okay, now, the first step is to make sure your iPod Touch is plugged into your computer through a USB cord. And now the second step is to put your iPod Touch into DFU mode. To do that, you hold the home and power buttons for 5 to 15 seconds until you're a chime. And if you don't have the chime, it's 10 seconds. You might not hear it the first time. And then you have to release the power button, making sure your thumb or finger or whatever is still on the home button until you hear a chime in about 10 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so my iPod's in DFU mode. It's not responding. That's normal. That's good. And now let's go to the computer. It'll give you a message that says your iPod in recovery mode and you must restore the, f the your iPod. Now you need the .ipsw file that I have right up there. This is that 3.0 and again the links to get any firmware you want will be in my description. And I'll have a better or a written description on how to do this too. So, what you will want to do now is click on the shift button on our keyboard and then we want to left click on restore on iTunes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once you do that, it'll bring up a little message that will tell you to search for your IPSW file. So I put mine on the desktop just to make it easier to find. And you'll notice it'll be like a little white box with a little music file and it'll say a firmware type, etc. So you want to double click it. And now iTunes will say extracting the software and your iPod touch to still be non-responsive. Now it's going to say preparing your iPod for restore. And what you'll get is a white screen on your iPod. So this process is going to take a little bit. It's going to take a while, depending on your computer. This is a fairly fast computer, so it shouldn't take too long. And the chimes that you hear are normal and good. They're okay. You don't have to worry about that. And I'm getting a lot of messages on my computer about my iPod. So now let's turn to it. It says it's booting up. Now your computer or iPod might take a bit longer to respond than mine has, even though mine is still... It's still going through the process even though it's booting up. You'll, you'll see what I mean soon enough. Anyways, you can see mine is zooming by pretty fast. Chime's okay. Okay, let's take a look at my iPod. As you notice, there's now a little loader. There's a loader, whatever you want to call it. That's. It's basically in the process of bringing back my firmware now. For the 3.0, there's going to be two of these and two of these little loaders. And for other firmwares, I'm pretty sure there's only one. But the second one for the 3.0 firmware is quick. This is my my Touch 2G to keep that in mind. But the slide I have in my description has every firmware, so be free to uh, check it out. Just look for whatever firmware type you want, and make sure it's the correct device. Okay, mine It's going to take a bit longer, so guys, I'm going to pause while this keeps on going. Oh, and I just wanted to tell you guys before this finishes, 
it just hopefully if you haven't done this you might want to back up all your folders onto iTunes and everything by right clicking on your iPod here it'll be over here somewhere and transferring purchases sadly it doesn't transfer music and photos and I don't think but it'll transfer all your apps just not the data unless you want to back it up but I wouldn't suggest that if you're upgrading your firmware so it'll just basically transfer the apps blank and if you have anything that can only be gotten SSH go on SSH and take it out like all the folders I have over here are all for SSH all of these folders are for SSH okay now I'm going to let this pause again and I'll come back to you when it's done.